This is a special report from WDHN News. Good morning, I'm Amanda Arnold reporting live from WDHN News. At any moment, we expect Alabama Governor Kay Ivey to appear at a joint news conference from the State Capitol Building in Montgomery to provide further updates on COVID-19. On May 21st, you recall, she issued her Safer at Home order to help prevent the spread of COVID-19. It is set to expire this Friday, July 3rd. And at last report, she had not decided whether to renew it or to change it. And now here comes Governor Ivy. Now we go to her live at the State Capitol Building in Montgomery. Well, good morning, everyone, and thank you all so much for being here. Our current Safer at Home order will expire this coming Friday, July 3, at 5 p.m., and we're here to give you an update on what happens next. And as you can imagine, we've had lots of questions. <clears throat> Folks, in just a couple of weeks, it will mark the four-month period that our state has responded to COVID-19. And I am fully aware of the physical, mental, and emotional pain that this has caused our people. This is an unprecedented year, for not only for our state, but for our entire country and the world. We've lost family and friends to a new aggressive, deadly virus. People who've never filed unemployment have experienced pain in the loss of their job. Our citizens have been hurting in multiple ways. As I've said many times before, when we entered the April stay-at-home order, it was to allow our state to get our arms around the situation as much as possible. It was to keep our individuals, schools, and businesses from spreading the virus. And while focused on keeping people safe, this order also, unfortunately, created a very difficult situation for many of our state's businesses, both large and small. But COVID-19 requires that all people practice social distancing, personal hygiene, and wearing face masks that some categories of businesses could not adequately do while operating. The order was enacted to allow our government to shift and to be able to respond with as many resources as possible. And the order also allowed our hospitals to prepare and hopefully not become overwhelmed. And as of now, they are not overwhelmed. I firmly believe that you cannot have a life without a strong livelihood. And having a shutdown for months on end was never my intent. It was also unsustainable. In the last few weeks, the COVID-19 cases have continued to rise. And currently, there are over 33,000 Alabamians who have contracted or contacted this disease today. Over 800 have died. While we are not overwhelmed yet, we should not think that because our summer feels more normal than our spring that we are back to normal. Fact is, folks, we are still in the thick of this virus disease and it is deadly. We are learning how to live with this disease and need, <coughs> need to continue to do what we need to do to avoid another stay at home order. That means to maintain six foot social distancing, to stay at home unless you just must get out to go to work or for a necessity. And when you're in public, for goodness sake, wear a mask. You know, Dr. Harris and I can order you to wear a mask, but it would be next to impossible to enforce. But you know, you shouldn't have to order somebody to do what is just in your own best interest and that of the folks that you care about, your family, friends, and neighbors. So today, I'm announcing that our current Safer at Home order is set to expire on July 3. We will be extending that to July 31 at 5 p.m. Again, we cannot sustain a delayed way of life even as we search for a vaccine. There are many viruses that we live with already and we work the necessary uh, precautions into our daily lives. But let me urge you in the strongest manner I can 
to incorporate COVID-19 precautions into your daily routine. As a reminder, what's in the current order? Maintain six foot social distancing. <clears throat> we strongly encourage you to wear a face mask when out in public. And whether that means that even if you just run into the grocery store or go and pick up a pair of shoes for your child or just go into the office. Your personal responsibility means it's everyone's responsibility. Personal responsibility also extends to the store manager and owner, hairstylist, restaurateur, youth sports coach, and pastors. It takes us all to be vigilant and adhering to these social distancing guidelines in order to stop the spread of this deadly disease. And y'all, when you're on the baseball fields or at the lake or the beach, or celebrating a birthday, be sure to maintain at least a six foot distance. We must each do our part. Many people speculate about our recent rising rates as a result of the Memorial Day holiday weekend. Well, folks, if that's true, that's alarming. And we have to do better as we come up on the 4th of July Independence Day. And while I love to celebrate our great nation's birthday as much as anyone, it does not, excuse me, does not mean that social distancing should not apply. Even at the beach, even at the lake, even when you're out with your friends. If we continue to going in the wrong direction and our hospitals are not able to handle the capacity, then we're going to reserve the right to come back and reverse course. Living with COVID-19 has become our new normal and we should expect to live with it as long as it takes until the cases start to decline or our medical experts find a vaccine. So now let me invite Dr. Harris to come up and give his report. And then I'd like to ask Representative Dexter Grimsley and uh, Mayor Dexter McClendon of Greenville to share their respective testimonies on how COVID-19 has directly affected them and their families then we'll be happy to take your questions. Dr. Harris. Thank you very much, Governor. Um, good morning, everybody. Uh, uh, thank you for joining us today. And, and Governor Ivey, thank you so much for those remarks. Um, Really, really appreciate that. Um, as the governor mentioned, we're, we're well over 30,000 uh, confirmed cases uh, so far in Alabama. We, we've had uh, more than 10,000 cases uh, confirmed just in the past 14 days. So uh, that works out to around 28% of all of our cases have been confirmed just in the past uh, 14 days. Um, even though we're uh, testing more than we have ever tested, uh, the percentage of tests that are positive, in fact, is going up and is now as high as it has been, just under 11% uh, um, where it's been for the past couple of weeks. So even though we're testing more, we're finding a greater percentage of people who are positive, and, and that means we know that we have increasing uh, transmission going on uh, in the community. Um, our, our hospitals today are actually reporting more uh, confirmed COVID-19 inpatients than they have seen so far during, uh, during the outbreak. Um, so more than uh, 750 Alabamians hospitalized today around the state, uh, uh, about 300 more who are hospitalized awaiting uh, confirmation, awaiting test results. Uh, so uh, these numbers are higher than we have seen uh, so far. We have uh, around 275 ICU beds remaining uh, statewide uh, all total. Um, as you all know, unfortunately, um, over 130,000 Americans have uh, lost their life so far since this began uh, in late in late uh, February. Uh, here in Alabama, we've had we've lost more than 900 uh, Alabamians. Um, for, for those over age 65, that represents uh, people over age 65 make up about uh, three quarters of that group. About three quarters of all of our deaths uh, have occurred in our seniors, even though they're only about 17% of our cases. Um, if you do that math, that works out to uh, seniors who are infected with this disease have about a one in nine chance of uh, not surviving. Uh, and, and that's, uh, that's, that's a tragedy. Um, I, I just want to uh, use this opportunity just to plead with, with Alabamians, uh, please continue to take this seriously. I, I know so many of you have, and we have heard from so many people who 
are helpful and supportive, but we know that there are many people that have not yet gotten the message. Um, our, uh, our state has opened back up in many ways, but this is not the time to let our guard down. Uh, that's particularly true for those folks who, who are senior citizens or those that have chronic health problems. This is still a safer at home uh, order that's uh, being enacted, and you are safer at home, uh, particularly if you have uh, a chronic health problem or you're, or you're an older person. Um, please uh, continue to stay home if you're sick. Uh, please continue to wash your hands. Please continue to use face coverings when you go out in public. Uh, th the reason to do that is because you care about other people. Um, we know that uh, face coverings aren't perfect and they don't prevent everything, but we do know that they limit your chance of, of giving the infection to someone else if you have it. And, and as we know, many people uh, who can spread the disease don't even know that they're infected. Uh, there's so many uh, uncertain things going on in the world right now, but this is one thing that we actually have power over. We, it's in our power to stop this. Each one of us with our own individual behavior has the ability to uh, prevent the spread of this disease, and I would just encourage you to continue doing that. We, we all know what we need to do, uh, and, uh, and, and we all can, can do that. One of the projects we've been working on at ADPH is trying to make our data a, a little more accessible and understandable uh, by the public. Uh, we uh, have uh, spoken a little bit about this recently, but by the end of the day today, we're going to roll out a, a statewide map that will have uh, color coding uh, by county, showing the alert level uh, for each county. It's going to be a, a red, orange, yellow, green uh, type of classification, and we're going to base that uh, those colors uh, on the data that's already available on the dashboard. Uh, we've had county level dash, uh, data available on our dashboard for a few weeks, but it can be sort of difficult to interpret and to, to uh, correlate and to compare yourself with other counties. So we're going to use this mechanism as a way of, of uh, letting you get just a quick glimpse at what's going on in your county throughout the state. Um, the criteria that we're basing this on uh, have to do with the 14-day trend of cases in your state. Um, we're going to uh, look at the number of cases over the past 14 days, whether they've gone up or whether they're going down or remaining flat. Uh, and for those uh, counties that have had cases increasing uh, for two weeks or more, that's a red level designation. Uh, we, we adjust that based on the amount of testing that we do because obviously uh, the more testing you can do, the more cases that you can pick up. Uh, for those counties that have had increases in their rates uh, between a week and two weeks, that's an orange level designation. Or for those that are increasing uh, for only less than a week, that's a yellow level designation. And, and for those few counties uh, that have uh, rates that, that have decreased uh, during that time, that actually becomes a green level a designation. Um, interestingly, um, the, the counties may not necessarily be what you would expect. We, uh, you will see later today when this rolls out. At, at the moment, uh, we know that Montgomery County has had a decrease in its average cases um, over over the past uh, several days, and will be a green level designation. That's not to say that green is all clear or green is normal. Um, green uh, represents uh, still a level of alert that we want people to uh, to understand and take seriously. Uh, green certainly doesn't mean that we don't continue to have issues with our hospitals here in the Montgomery area. As, as we know, they're still seeing high levels of, of cases. Uh, but each color-coded uh, level will correlate with guidance that we're issuing uh, about uh, what the public can do. Uh, uh, these are not orders or, or mandates, but just recommendations uh, about gatherings, um, about uh, face coverings, about hand washing, about social distancing and, and other uh, things. And, and we want the public to, to be aware of this, to look at it and think about it. It's something that can be used by local officials as well as they decide how to do things for their community. Uh, it's a way for uh, schools and, and the courts, uh, circuit courts and um, uh, businesses and other organizations in the community to get an idea of how they are, are doing it and how to proceed. So we'll have this available on our website uh, by the close of business today. We'll update it weekly uh, on Fridays. Uh, and uh, we uh, hope you'll take a look at that and get a better understanding of what's going on in your own community. So. Finally, again, I would just like to reiterate uh, what Governor Ivany said. Uh, this is really a time for us to step up and take responsibility for our own behavior. Uh, what you do affects other people, uh, and what you do can really affect other people in very serious ways. So please think about those in your family, those in your church, at your workplace, and in your community, uh, and please do your best to take care of those others.
Thank you. Representative Grimsley. Good morning. Let me start by saying thank, thank you to Governor Ivey for giving me the opportunity to be here uh, at this press conference today and just want to thank her for her current leadership on the situation that we were fighting with COVID-19 around the state and around the country and around the world. I'd also like to thank um, all of our uh, essential workers in the state. I'm um, thankful for all of our frontline workers, such as nurses, our doctors, and uh, thank Dr. Harris for everything the Department of Public Health has done. And just so thankful that we still, even through this situation, we still have hope and we still have an, an opportunity to do what's needed in order to fight this, this, this trouble, troubling times that we're in. <clears throat> there are some things that we don't know. I can understand that. We don't know when a vaccine will be developed that will successfully uh, ward off this battle that we're in right now. We have no idea in a medication that we might be able to formulate would be able to uh, better treat or give therapies for COVID-19. Uh, we'll be speculating for years as whether or not each state or Alabama made the proper decisions or, or whether or not we did what was right at the proper times, and that'll be up for the debate no matter who makes that decision or what happens. But I turn away from the things that we don't know to let us look at the things that we do know. We do know people are getting sick from COVID-19. We know that people are dying around the state of Alabama, around the country, and around the world from COVID-19. So what we do know is COVID-19 is real. And since we know that, we need to uh, better protect ourselves and others. Uh, some of us know it through TV. Some of us know it through uh, different avenues. People have told us that people are sick and dying. Some of us know it personally. I had a sister back in the early fight with this battle. 50, 58 years old, who we lost as she came to COVID-19. A fun-loving person, she was a nurse for over 20 years, so she understood medical terminology and medical terms, and I'm, I bet you if she could still hear or still know what was going on as she was on the uh, life support and the intubator and all that stuff, I'm sure she was laying there saying that she hopes that everyone or no one else go through what she's going through. So today I challenge the state of Alabama to live off the things that we do know. We do know that we can protect ourselves from COVID-19 to an extent. We know we can protect others to COVID-19 by following recommendations that our health leaders have told us and just by using common sense. It makes more sense to me to, to, to wear a mask and I, I can't force anyone to wear a mask, but I do know that any level of protection is better than no level of protection. And if she was alive today, that's exactly what she'd be calling me, telling me each and every day. Protect yourself and protect others. Uh, we have frontline workers who have to go back to work and work long shifts because of my personal decision not to wear a mask and possibly get sick and fill up our ICU beds. They asked me just to speak personal today, so that's what I do. We have to make decisions today to do what we've been advised to do. It's not too hard to, if you decide to wear a mask and go out in public and not spread or not bring home. It's not too hard for us to go into stores and put on a mask to protect those in. It's not too hard to wash your hands, as been recommended, to keep cleanliness and proper hygiene in order to fight this disease. We, the people of Alabama, have a choice. And it's not as a group of people, it's an individual choice that we make today going forward until we can find a way to get out of this battle that we find ourselves in. And I just know that we have that opportunity to do that today. I encourage the state of Alabama to follow the rules and guidelines set by the Department of Public Health and also follow common sense. Coming up on this 4th of July week, weekend, we want to celebrate, but we don't want to lose anybody else. Uh, we're in changing times. So in changing times, we got to change our habits, our behavior, and even our thoughts when it comes down to protecting ourselves and others from COVID-19. Again, I thank you for the opportunity, and I hope that we can sustain this battle, and of course, I know that even even this too shall pass. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mayor McClendon. Good morning. Uh, first off, I'd like to thank the governor for the opportunity to come and talk a little bit about what Janice and I went through. Uh, she's key to me; always will be. Uh, we've been friends a long time and had a mutual friend that brought us together on several occasions 
have a lot of respect. And to Dr. Harris, uh, I can mark something off my bucket list because I've been wanting to meet uh, Dr. Harris because I've been so impressed with what he's done. And one of the things in Greenville that we did right off the bat, we made a decision that we were going to listen to what the governor was saying and Dr. Harris was saying because they have more information than we did. I want to tell you today that I also happen to be uh, chairman of the hospital in Greenville. Uh, about three years ago, we almost lost our hospital. We did something that I really don't like doing. We did a half a cent sales tax to keep that hospital open. We were fortunate enough with the governor's help and other people that UAB have come to our rescue. And when I say that, they're managing our hospital. I'm happy to say that we had a hospital because if we had not had a hospital, if our hospital had been closed, yes, we had some deaths and we had a hot spot. And our hot spots happened because people didn't listen. But if that hadn't happened, if we had not had a hospital, then I believe we'd have lost three or four times that amount. Our hospital's done a great job. I want to thank UAB today publicly. It's the first opportunity I've really had to do that. They've been great. We're very fortunate to have that facility in this state. We're very fortunate to have these two people to my right that are doing this because they care and they want things to be better. And our job is to listen and use some common sense. I would like, on a personal note, to tell you a little bit, and, and by the way, when, when I was called yesterday about coming up here, I said, what do you want me to talk about? And the answer was, whatever you want to talk about. And I said, well, that's very dangerous, okay? So we are going to have lunch here in a few minutes for everybody in the room because I'm going to be long-winded. Uh, I want you to know that there's some things happen to our family that um, I can't believe anybody would not take this serious. I just don't understand it. Now, back in February or March, you know, maybe I didn't take it. I was all upset because we weren't going to have March Madness. But this is a lot bigger and a lot more important than that. So my mother is 90 years old, and she is in the Greenville Nursing Home. I have not seen my mother since March. Her birthday, her 90th birthday was on April the 7th. Did not get to see her. Mother's Day, did not get to say, see her. Family means a lot to us. Some of you might remember, but seven, Thursday, seven years ago on July the 2nd, my wife was sitting in the back, drowned in a pool, and they told me she was gone. I'm not telling you that this virus is something like that, but we have had the virus. My mother's had it, and by the way, I'd like to say today, she is negative, two negatives. They've done a great job of getting that 90-year-old lady who we love through this ordeal. I'd also like to say to you today that Janice and I had it, and it was a lot worse on Janice than it was me because she had to put up with me at the house for three weeks. But I am very, very blessed to have my mom and my wife that has gone through this, and they're okay. But I'm here to tell you today, this is not rocket science. Pay attention. Maybe in March, you didn't get it. But we're in July. We're almost in July. And if you can't figure this out by now, then I'll be honest with you, you there's something wrong. And what they're doing and what they're telling us is for the best interest of our community. And we have taken their lead, and we're going to continue to take their lead. I think the mask is absolutely one of the most important things you do. But I don't, 
I believe in less government, and I do believe that trying to enforce that would be almost impossible in Butler County and in Greenville. That's my opinion. I say to you today that this information needs to get out. This cameras are all here. Hopefully people are watching to make Alabama great, okay? To make Greenville and Butler County great. To use some common sense. Every day somebody stops me and says, I'll be glad when this is over. Well, it's up to you to make it over. Now, this state right here is known for football, and that's really, really important to us. Today, you can start making sure by doing what you're supposed to do with common sense while we can have football in the fall if it's so important. But I will tell you, my mother's life and my wife's life is more important, and I love football. Our son is a football coach, and we love it. All right, we're going to break away from the news conference now just to give you a summary. Uh, Governor Ivory's amended Safer at Home order that she issued on May 22nd has been extended to July 31st. There have been no major changes to this order. This means that entertainment venues will be open with social distancing guidelines. Athletic activities and athletic competitions will be allowed. Education facilities will stay open. Child care and summer camps will also be allowed to open with social distancing Friday at 5 in the afternoon. Again, Governor Ivey and her administration stress the importance of following the social distancing guidelines. And this means, of course, we've heard it many times, staying six feet apart, wearing face coverings or masks whenever in public, washing hands frequently, and staying home when you're sick. Well, again, this order will now expire on July 31st. It was to expire this Friday. It's been extended to July 31st. And just to let you know that WDHN News at 5, 6, and 10 will have more news on this new order and amended order and what it's going to mean, especially coming up on the July 4th holiday where everybody's still going to be needing to keep that social distance everywhere you go. We want to thank you for joining us for this. We now return to our regularly scheduled programming. You've been watching a WDHN News special report. We now return to our regularly scheduled programming.